America, I was under the impression that you guys have managed to abolish slavery. Because I wouldn't have uh, considered America to be the best country on earth had I not thought so. Uh, so if you manage to abolish slavery, why is this man allowed to own another person like this in a debate? Hmm? I mean, listen to this. Let, let, let's listen. I, I don't even know who this gentleman is. But but I do give props for uh, Mr. Chenk allowing him to finish. Like, it, it must have been difficult to allow a 2 minutes, point fifty three seconds of monologue. Let's listen to it. But anyway, let me just get on to it. You say, you say, first of all, you say, I don't care about the death of Palestinian children. Yes, I do care. I care very deeply about it. But I also know that the responsibility for their deaths lies on Hamas, which has misgoverned their society for the last 16 years and now has been leading the country into being in a war with Israel. So, yes, it's on Hamas, this. As for seeing wars, by the way... So, so this is interesting, right? It starts like a debate. Uh, people have different opinions. Like, up until it was fine... Up until this point, the exchange of idea was going fine, but but this is where it starts to to go into dangerous territory. I just mentioned about seeing wars because, as far as I can see, you're very ill-traveled as well as rather ill-lettered and ill-spoken. And I mentioned that I cover wars and go to wars because I happen to think myself that it's worth seeing things with your own eyes, including things that you don't particularly like, but you report the truth. I don't know if you ever even leave your own bedroom. And I can tell already that you don't because you've already said something that demonstrates you know nothing about this conflict. You have. So the reason I, I, I found this to be fascinating is that it is my personal experience that many people who are woke in the Western world they immediately stop being woke once they travel. And I don't mean like traveling as a tourist, right? Because like if, if I were to go in South Africa and I book a hotel and I sit there for like a couple of weeks, that doesn't necessarily mean that I get the insight of South Africa. When I say traveling, I mean like actually go and work there for a year or two, right? Like, like whenever you have an American that lives their country and, and tr tries to work anywhere else in the world. Man, their, their worldviews, especially on social issues, th they, they broaden to the point where they stop being woke. Um, unironically, like, I, I'm pretty sure that there may be, but I personally know a lot of people. And not one of them happens to be a woke person that has traveled around the world, especially if they traveled in China or India. Uh, or, or even uh, places in Africa, they immediately have like a completely different opinion. And, and I think like part of that is appreciating America a little bit more. Like you don't get to appreciate something until you lose it. The fish doesn't know what water is until it's outside of the ocean. So uh, I, I really like this talking point because it's absolutely true. Like most woke ideologues do not live their country. Uh, and if they do, it's just to travel a little bit and then come back. But it's definitely not to live amongst the natives of another population. I've just demonstrated it in the following terms. You said that this is why we need to push for a two-state solution and give legitimacy to the Palestinian Authority. I'll tell you something you don't know, because I guess you spent no time in the West Bank, have you? I'll tell you something you probably don't know. The Palestinian Authority, Fatah, celebrated the 7th of October massacres. I'll give you another fact which demonstrates you know nothing about this and clearly haven't ever visited any Palestinians in the West Bank as I have. If there was an election tomorrow in the West Bank, the reason why there isn't one is because if there was an election tomorrow in the West Bank, Hamas would win. So your idea of a two-state solution, I'm afraid, you are so out of date and you really should leave your bedroom. Because in this region, nobody thinks that there is a two-state solution on the table because there is not a viable negotiating partner. But I just want to make one up. So I, I find this talking point to be very interesting and it's, it's very difficult to debunk. Uh, but, but this has nothing to do with the debate. It's just like my own personal opinion. What, what I don't understand is that if this is reality, and I, I genuinely think that it may be, why is it that European leaders are such in a rush to take in Palestinian refugees? Like, like on one hand, right, like they agree, and, and I think like Israel as well, it's like the two-state solution is untenable if the polls and the statistics are what they are. So, so you're basically saying that it's untenable for them to be there, 
but it is very terrible to be in other nations that are allied with Israel. Because I do think like European nations view Israel as an ally. I do think like Canada, for example, views Israel as... So, so how is it that Iran are good for the countries there, but they are good for the countries here? Right? Like, again, I, I, I'm not saying that the civilians and their representatives are one and the same, but the civilians, if they have sympathies for their representatives, if, if the civilians look at their representatives' actions and justify them... That, that if you bring them into another democratic nation, would they not create activism? Would they not create communities with, with the same sentiments and, and beliefs that they had from the places that they were brought up from? See, this is an interesting conversation that I, I don't see it being mentioned because I, I did see in the media, especially with uh, some... Uh, People of renown from the European Union and Canada saying, oh, well, we need to bring uh, refugees. We need to bring refugees. And I'm like, okay, but like, first of all, aren't we allied with Israel? Like, would they not have the same grievances that they have towards Israel to, to our nations? And if that is the answer, is, right? Like, is that not a conversation? Like, maybe maybe they have like some reasons. Maybe, maybe they have like some very articulate points that can persuade me that I am wrong. But I am yet to even hear this discussion. Another main point. You have gone on and on tonight throwing accusations out against the Jewish state, against me. It's the sort of thing you do. I know you're a sort of sort of online pugilist and think you can run for office and <laughs> good luck with that. But I'd just like to point out that you only really get animated if the Jews are involved. And I can tell that for the following reason. I mean, your surname's Uyghur, isn't it? One million Uyghur Muslims in China have been put in concentration camps in the last decade. And pe you know, people of your ilk never really care about that, do you? Because it's not the Jews doing it, it's the Chinese Communist Party. At the moment, one million, one million people who are, from who are in Pakistan at the moment, who are your fellow Muslims, and who happen to be Afghan, and I don't think you care about them, do you? One million Afghans are currently being forcibly deported from Pakistan to Afghanistan. You don't care about that. You're not riled up about that. You're not riled up about what the Jungleweed are currently doing in Sudan, where thousands and thousands of people are being attacked by the, by the, the Islamist militia there. You don't care about any of that. You get exercised and you rile up what little base you have of malcontents because you're riled up when the Jews do anything. I, I don't know if it's necessarily as simple. I, I think it's more likely to do with American culture, where you have to care about the current thing. Um, and, and this is a really great talking point. Uh, no one talks about Ukraine anymore. Like, the war is still going on. Uh, but, but it's not the current thing, right? It, it's the same with the pandemic. Like, everyone was talking about Everyone was talking about the pandemic. It was everywhere. Like, like you couldn't open a radio or a television set without, like, COVID deaths, COVID cases, COVID quarantines, COVID measures, government. Like, literally, it was on every single channel. And then, just, like, one day apart, just one day apart, everyone was like, the Ukraine, the situation. And, and, and I'm like, okay, well, obviously, like, for me in Romania, it is normal to talk about the Ukraine because it's literally over the border. But, but to hear people on Twitter from the United States being so animated, so energized, like, I'm not saying they shouldn't care, but, but like, the way that they, they had so much pathos, and the way that they, it, it's almost like they were there. Like, people in Romania were less animated than the people in America. And the question is, it's like, why is it just this conflict? I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't care. Of course you should, but, like, what about the other conflicts? Oh, it's not the current thing. It's not the current thing. If it's not the current thing, it doesn't bring in ad revenue. It doesn't have in, like, clicks. And that. So, so then, you know, the, the thing is, like, I understand someone that reports the news and someone that wants to talk about something. But, but when you're showing that you have pathos and you really care and you have empathy and it's like, well, the children. I'm like, okay. Okay, fine. But are you doing this because you're genuinely an empathetic person? In which case you should care about all the conflicts or at least the significant ones. What are you doing this, you know, to pretend you have empathy because uh, it resonates better with the public? Like, if you're just a person that's uh, having a poker face and you're reporting the news, it's just, it's just not as good, you know? It doesn't, it doesn't do the clickbait as good. 
But but when you're sitting there and you're doing a little bit of moral outrage and you're like, how dare they? You know, like, like when you do that, all of a sudden, oh, the news, deshi, deshi, basara, basara, the numbers go up, right? Uh, so so this is what uh, Czech Uger is being called on. I really like the insult. It's like, Uger is your surname, isn't it? Well, why don't you care about the Ugers? Which is, I, I do think actually the Antrix have covered it. I think they covered it in a couple of segments. But definitely, definitely not as much coverage as they, they have recently given to uh, the Middle Eastern conflict. So anyway, right, let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.